Hello and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Jane Felgate and this is a curious video indeed. I'm not gonna lie, it is a bit of an oxymoron, but buckle up as we are taking another trip down through the hallowed halls of the SCP Foundation as we talk the top 10 mysterious SCP we don't know anything about. Okay, who spotted the issue here? Because I have. So we don't know much about them, it's gonna be hard to do a video on them, although I will say what we do know is pretty de worrying. Before we delve into the murky world of SCPs, you're still going to need to pay for my therapy by the way, I want to ask you guys what you think the most mysterious thing in the world is. I'm straight up thinking the great sphinx of Egypt and the pyramids because like what is going on there? Also again before we delve into the video, I just want to shed some light on the foundation's ranking system, it comes up a lot. Now the SCP foundation ranks its creatures with an object class which is said to be for the purpose of containment. The rankings are safe, euclid, keta, thormy, naturalized and decommissioned. Safe basically means that the SCPs are easily and safely contained, Euclid means that the SCP is an anomaly and containment isn't reliable. These SCPs are pretty unpredictable. Keta means that they are very difficult to contain and likely dangerous and Thormiel means that the foundation uses this SCP to contain other SCPs which is kind of like a strange inception. Neutralized means that the anomalous SCP has been destroyed or disabled and decommissioned is a shameful classification that is no longer used as an object class. The less said about that, honestly the better. Just to make it a little bit clearer, you guys can apply the locked box test to SCPs. It goes like this. If you lock it in a box and leave it alone and nothing bad will happen, then it's a safe SCP. If you lock it in a box, leave it alone and you're not entirely sure what will happen, then it is probably Euclid. If you lock it in a box, leave it alone and it easily escapes, then it's probably Keita. If it is the box, then it's probably Thormiel. Okay, I'm glad we cleared that up. Also please leave a like on this video because I just did some good explanations. I feel like SCP teacher Rebecca. Ooh, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have SCP-2719, an SCP I'm calling the Inside Outside. Foundation notes on SCP-2719 are sketchy and concerning. The object class is Keta, which means it's not well contained. All we get from the notes is this, SCP-2719 is a variable abstract metaphysical construct pointer. Concepts acted upon by SCP-2719 will either go or become inside. Further information on the SCP should not be provided to personnel who are both sapient and biological. Guilty. Then we get a list of pointers. Now these are humans who either went inside or became inside or died inside. One of the so-called subjects who went inside was the entirety of Olulu in Finland. Ulu? Ulu Finland? What's up Finland? What's happening? Coming in at number 9 we have SCP SCPJ aka Scrippy. SCP SCPJ used to be a cartoon mascot found in training videos for D class personnel prior to 1994, but after its retirement it became a pest and was classified an SCP. The foundation notes often refer to it as the little Object class Keter, Scrippy's containment notes read, SCP SCPJ is to be kept in a hermetically sealed containment vault at Site 58 in the hope that it might suffocate and starve to death, though the foundation acknowledges that such a wonderful possibility actually coming to fruition is ill becoming of anything associated with the SCP. It wants it to die, basically. The notes also detail an encounter from the year 1995 before Scrippy was contained. It seems that the cartoon was bothersome, it would ask a lot of questions, interject with riddles and then make way for other SCPs to come in and kill. I think SCP is kind of like a way more menacing and cartoon C-3PO. Coming into number 8 we have SCP-1496, the place setting. Honestly how strange, it seems that this SCP was obtained during a raid in an urban literary collective in Quebec, Canada. Why a raid would need to be conducted for what is described as a plate and several items of silverware, well we just don't know. The SCP notes suggest that the SCP is locked up safely in a small item locker in the foundation. They also read it no longer displays any ongoing anomalous properties, although records it has affected in the past remain in their affected state. Oh my god what happened? I feel like I need to know. I'm here like scratching my head on what these records might contain and how did cutlery in a plate cause so much drama. Coming into number 7 we have SCP-4559 The Receipt. Okay this one is pure quirky, I'm actually very very here for it. SCP-4559 is, and I quote, 
quote, a problemistic anomaly associated with the choice on whether or not a person wants a receipt or not within most grocery stores. Um, lol. It seems that SCP-4559 will not trigger if a customer chooses to get a receipt or is non-consensually given one, but at the same time the notes suggest that the SCP may actually be the act of decision making as to whether or not to get a receipt. I'm mind boggled. The notes suggest that this SCP is the only unpredictable and totally random phenomenon in the universe. Sure. Adding further mystery is that the foundation notes say that all information about the SCP is to be removed from all scientific institutions. Also baffling is that the object class is Thormiel. What? Coming into number 6 we have SCP-2827 The Lobster. This is a Mexican mystery if I ever did hear one. This SCP is so mysterious that the foundation don't even have an object class for it. The page on the foundation website is headed with a notice from the Records of Information and Security Administration. It reads, as of 12, 13, 15, the database entry for SCP-2827 has been rewritten 73 times due to massive database corruption. While the possibility of tampering or sabotage has not been ruled out, it is currently believed that the information about SCP-2827 is inherently unstable and subject to unpredictable erratic changes. So, what I tell you, it may change. The most recent information suggests that the SCP is a 2 meter square plot of grass and looks like a lobster. A lot of data has been expunged or corrupted on the SCP, which seems to appear on the west coast of the United States. Notes suggest that there have been 13 casualties associated with examining SCP-2827. Coming into number 5, we have SCP-1665, the crossword. Look, I don't know, but some people love a good crossword. Personally, I just don't have the patience for it. I'm a Slytherin, not a Ravenclaw. I like to know the facts and act accordingly immediately. But that is not possible with SCP-1665. Have a look at what we are dealing with here. It's a crossword with cryptic clues. Now 18 across is all written records will be altered so that they are in the form of a crossword blank, making storage of information on SCP-1665 difficult. Now I'm guessing the blank here is puzzle, yay for me. Other clues are cryptic but allow you to piece together information about it, but again, honey ain't got time. If anyone has the patience to play this game, there is a link to the source in the description box. Now if you complete it, do tweet me or Instagram me with a completed picture and let me know so I can read it out for a future episode. Thank you for your hard work. Coming into number 4 we have SCP-3733 The Last Sane Man. Is this SCP sane or insane? Is it insanity itself? The foundation notes claim that this SCP is an info hazard capable of spreading but they don't know how. The infection caused by the SCP activates several typically inactive areas of the brain, resulting in an inability to act and reason outside of one one's own experiences and personality. So what is their purpose here? It seems that when a person has been infected, they become SCP-37331. Now it's pretty hard to tell from the foundation notes, which are an exchange between researcher Calvin and a person apparently infected with the SCP, Dr. Chapman. What's happening? Again, sketchy. The researcher has quarantined the doctor, who believes that researcher Calvin is the one infected. He claims that he is the last sane man in the world and that everyone else is quote unquote gone. Coming into number 3 we have SCP-3976, Dead Agatha Christie's. Yeah. Bizarrely enough, a lot of dead Agatha Christie's have been showing up in rural England. The real Agatha Christie, a famous mystery author who wrote Murder on the Orient Express, The Mousetrap and Poirot, has been dead since 1976. Even though she died in the 1970s, in 1926 she famously went missing for 11 days and maybe that's important here. This SCP manifests as the dead body of Christie, appearing as if murdered, in many ways described in famous murder scenes from her book. DNA analysis have shown that the bodies are genetically identical identical to Agatha Christie's real cops, which is really bizarre. Coming into number 2 we have SCP-4023, Dr. Ike's investigation. By order of the Foundation High Command, information on the SCP is classified. All we know is that Dr. Ike's is investigating the nature of this SCP, which seems to be a collection of 23 anomalous objects and entities. The number 23 seems to be important. A sketchy gathering of information seems to suggest a Lovecraftian style entity is connecting the 23 and Actually, there might even be a cult out there that worships the number and everything it stands for. What that is exactly? 
it's hard for me to say. If you click on any of the links provided in the foundation notes, it will say that your access has been blocked. Coming into number one, it is none other than SCP-001. SCP-001 is often referred to as the original evil. Is the original SCP the Scarlet King? There actually are many, many, many SCP-001s out there, all of which are pretty horrifying to learn about. We've got When Day Breaks, which is a scenario wherein the sun gets hotter and brighter and we all melt but don't die and basically turn into sentient flesh zombies. Ooh. There's also the story of the simple toy maker and the dead man, God's blind spot and more. SCP-001 is a closely guarded mystery. The foundation notes read, in order to prevent knowledge of SCP-001 from being leaked, several slash no false SCP-001 files have been created alongside the true file files. All files concerning the nature of SCP-001 include the decoy and decoys. They are protected by a memetic kill agent designed to immediately cause cardiac arrest in any non-authorized personnel attempting to access the file. Revealing the true nature of the SCP to the general public is cause for Execution. So, execution. To me, it sounds like the foundation are going to be keeping this one under lock and key forever. And really, it's in our best interest to not go digging unless we want to die. So, guys, what a roller coaster! What a bunch of mysterious SCPs. Which do you think is the most elusive? Which do you think is the scariest? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and check out our most amazing Instagrams. Before I go, I'm going to read some comments from the top 10 scary SCPs that could end the world, part four. The Luna Wolf said, Who else is kind of scared of these videos but loves them? Me, Luna Wolf. Me. I'm scared. Poststorm said, Sorry, Rebecca. Time for part five. Also, if I was an SCP, I'd make everyone around me be filled with good luck for the rest of their lives. But the catch is, the rest of their lives is just one year. You'll have phenomenal wealth and all, but you'll only be able to live for one year after coming in contact with me. In which case, I think, Take the luck, stay away, I want a long and happy life. Rebecca Dyches said, Rebecca, I think you need a hug from SCP-999. Aww, I think maybe I do, although I don't like being tickled, so it needs to keep its creepy little hands to itself. Hugging only, tickling no, steadfast rule. Thank you guys for watching this video, do let me know if you want more SCP Foundation content. Honestly, it's sending me a bit mad, but I can probably deal with it, for now, anyway. Make sure you leave a thumbs up, stick around for the next video. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and I'll see you soon, bye.